we don't need uh, somebody to think we're spiritual or anything. We, we've been 33 years as a family, and I've been doing it for 40 years. That is praying and reading the Bible uh, each day. I don't know what life would be like without doing that. In fact, uh, we would not have made it if we had not done that. And one of the reasons why I am doing it is because I don't believe that you're going to make it if you don't spend time with God in the morning and pray and read his word. So we are doing this for your benefit, to inspire you, to encourage you, uh, to be able to say, well, if this family can do it, as crazy as this preacher is, then we can do it too, and we should. And that's what it's about. Uh, and so today, we're reading three chapters of the Holy Bible <clears throat> in the Old King James Version. And that's your great grandmother's Bible, uh, the real Bible, if you will. Each day, with my family as a part of our family devotions, to urge you to read the Holy Bible in a year's time with your family. And give or take a few chapters. For some reason, we you might have a few more to go, but it's all right. I know we do. And that's okay because we all need the Word of God. And so today we're reading Nehemiah chapter 13, Jeremiah chapter 15, and Ezekiel chapter 6. And we were here yesterday and reading get a blessing on today. Uh, you need to check your salvation. Because I'm telling you, uh, God really spoke from, from his word and can speak from about anybody commenting or saying anything uh, about it or adding anything at all. Dr. Martin, Luther, not Dr. Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther, he was a doctor too. He said the Bible is alive. That's what you would have witnessed yesterday if you were with us. The Bible is alive. It speaks to me. It has feet. It runs after me. It has hands. It lays hold of me. If the Bible does not do that with you and to you, uh, you might want to examine yourself and see whether or not you be in the faith at least sometimes. <clears throat> see, I get more of a blessing of reading the Word of God to you like this than you probably do. And there has been an added blessing by doing this live for other people. And we knew from Jump Street. See, this was, this is another reason why, you know, I didn't choose to do this of my own mind, own doing. Number one is it's it's a it's a it's a wear and tear on everybody here, on our, our staff, myself, and so forth. Because normally I'm sitting down in my, my pajamas reading the Bible, drinking my tea or my coffee, taking my uh, that's a waxed situation. But another reason I didn't, I did, it wasn't me. In the words of the Jamaican rapper, it wasn't me. In this case, this was a good thing. It was, I, I believe me. is because I knew most people would not, and just hearing the reading word of God. I knew that. I know that now. Now, some of you have surprised me. I guess you're part of the remnant. You're part of the 7,000. I guess you you are a lot of seven. You got to be to sit live and, and and listen to a man read the word of God without comment, without any points. <clears throat> I do preach the gospel. I use this. We had to split the service. The service had grown so long, uh, two two and a half hours. I, I had to split the service up and uh, to a scripture reading service, standing between the living and the dead. One. 
and then the more devotional type service, uh, proper, uh, standing between the living and the dead too. Dr. Charles Stanley, one of the great pastors of all time, said, wherever you go, God is with you, watching over you and watching you. I added that part. See, he's the pastor. I'm the prophet. I got to tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to remind you, God's watching you. Yes. Protecting you and providing providing the truth you need for every situation. By the way, in a car battery, you need the negative and the positive for that thing to work, see? So you need a pastor and a prophet for that thing to go. The question is, will you open your heart to his word? That's the question. Will you apply it to your life and allow God to change? change you, to break you, to mow what you should do. Pardon me. Mm-hmm. See, that, that's where the problem comes in. We don't allow God to change us, to break us, to make us, and to mold us. Because of what? Because of pride, stubbornness, sin, evil. So that he can use in ways is far greater than you can imagine. Now, God will do that for you. Give yourself to him. There's two words that we don't hear today that we used to hear even back in the late 70s and early 80s when I first got saved. We ought to yield ours to the Lord. How that we ought to surrender all to him. In fact, we used to sing that song in the hymn book, from the hymn book. I surrender all. <clears throat> we don't hear those songs anymore. We don't hear that. We don't hear that song anymore. I haven't heard it in years from anybody else besides uh, us singing it here. So surrender all, and, and God will use you. As I told you, my daughter, Danae, broke a coffee pot, and then I broke a coffee pot. I don't know if it happened, but I broke a coffee pot about a week and a half, two weeks later. I punished first pot, a coffee pot. This was way back in, I guess, June, and then I broke the coffee pot. I had to punish myself. So we haven't had coffee until since June. We had to go buy a new coffee machine and pot and everything. <clears throat> and so this is only my second cup of coffee this week. For those of you who don't think it's a sin to drink coffee. Some of you people are so spiritual that you think it's a sin to drink water. But for some of you, some of you who think that drinking coffee uh, is a sin, don't drink it. But uh, when you're reading the Bible early in the morning, coffee is important, especially for some people. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, I have the high honor and the distinct privilege and the great pleasure and joy to read in your hearing 
Thus saith the Lord, the Word of God, and Nehemiah <coughs> chapter 13. Everybody, let's pray. Holy Father God in heaven, I thank you, Lord, for working that miracle for us in here this morning. And, uh, Lord, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and I do give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. Hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Holy Father God, I praise you and I thank you for your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, your Holy Spirit, and your Holy Word, and for all of the millions and manifold blessings that you have bestowed upon us down through the years. And uh, Holy Father God, I thank you for the homeless man who was made homeless because of the plague pandemic. Someone put a mic in his face recently and asked him, what are you going to be thankful for this year? And I hope everybody, under the sound of my voice, but as I uh, share this story in this, adopt the same attitude. He said, I'm going to sit on a bench and eat what little food I have. And I'm going to be thankful for all of the thanksgivings that I have enjoyed down through the years, now that I'm 60-something years old. I'm just going to be thankful for all of the wonderful thanksgivings I had with my family down through the years. And Lord, help everybody to be thankful like that, Lord, today. For we all can be thankful for many things. And Holy Father God, I praise you and I thank you for salvation and spiritual family and uh, uh, life, financial and material, protection and provision blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us down through the years, for we are still here. And Holy Father God, we individually and hopefully collectively confess our sins, our failures, and our faults, disobedience, pride, stubbornness, rebelliousness, bad attitudes, grieving and quenching your Holy Spirit, and all, all ungodliness, thought, word, and deed. Lord, whatever the sin is, Lord, you know all about it. For Jesus Christ's sake, for those of us who really want to confess our sins and repent, please forgive us of our sins, our failures, and our faults as we from our hearts, by your grace, forgive those who have sinned against us. Wash and cleanse our hearts and minds, souls, spirits, and consciences in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and make us, Lord, to be whiter than snow on the end. And, and the Holy Father God, I pray that you question the old man within us, each and every one of us, in the name of Christ, and fill us all with the fullness, the power, the unction, and the anointing of your Holy Spirit. And uh, Lord, help us to read your Holy understand it. Grant me your energy, your grace, and your strength to do that even on this Thanksgiving Day. And Lord God in heaven, at the age of 60 this year, I, I praise you and I thank you so, so much for allowing me my 40th thanksgiving as a saved person and uh, I give you the glory praise and I don't even know how to thank you I didn't know what 
I didn't know anything about Thanksgiving before uh, four years ago. And now that I, I, I know a little something about giving you thanks because you put it in my heart. I did not heart myself. I was with it. So, Lord, thank you for all of the things you've allowed uh, my family and myself to do together and separately down through the years and leading others to give you thanks <clears throat> and to give you praise. And I give you the glory, the praise, and the honor still years later. I praise you and I thank you for your mercy, Lord. I thank you for bringing us a mighty long way. And Holy Father God, I pray, Lord, that you would cast out the devil, his demons, and his hosts. And the satanic, demonic spirit of Judas, betrayal, and sabotage uh, the satanic demonic spirit of Jezebel treacherousness pride rebelliousness uh, disobedience and foolishness the demonic spirit of sand battle and Tobias cast these demon spirits out of the hearts and minds and lives of the people here who have problems Lord remove those demon spirits Rebuke and bind the devil and his demons and his hosts, Lord, from us during this time, during these services, and give us sweet victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil once again. Lord, I don't know how you do it, but I have great confidence and great assurance that you will hear my prayer once again and that you will answer my prayers and uh, great your mercy and your love and I thank you for that in advance and help us to understand your holy word and help us to apply it to our lives and help us to share it with others and to witness to others and to share the gospel with others and Lord I pray that you'll bless our time of passing out gospel tracts today even on Thanksgiving Day Lord I know my baby daughter wants to be involved with that, for she is uh, under me, uh, the chief soul winner in the family, and she's been faithful for many years, and I thank you for that, her concern for souls, and, uh, and everybody else's concern uh, in our ministry, and we pray that millions around the world would get some gospel pamphlets and gospel tracts. Pass them out every chance they get. No matter what they're going through, help them to care for others. And in the words of a young San Diego pastor, do something. Stop complaining, stop whining, stop saying you can't do this because you don't have the budget with what you got. To let your little light shine and Holy Father God I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would deliver each and every one of us even yes even on Thanksgiving deliver each and every everyone evil and sin grant us your grace and the power of your holy right to live right to think right and to do right that which is pleasing for the and the glory forever and lord i do pray that you'll help each and everyone who names for the for body not have faith as Paul pointed out and uh, everybody who is in the church is not saved as 
you have pointed out. And I do pray for those who are saved, for us, to humble ourselves, to seek your faith, to turn from our wicked ways and to repent and to get back to our first love. <coughs> Father God, I do pray that you would save those who are lost around here and all over the world. Revive those who are saved around here and all over the world. And I pray that, Lord, you would heal those who are sick around here and all over the world. I pray for those who are believers in Christ, that they would call for the elders of the church and confess their sins and repent and be transparent about it. To tell the truth and share so that they can be healed and raised up and and uh, to stop covering up sin. We pray for the salvation of those who are lost, and we pray for their healing. We pray for the millions who are grieving, not only of lost loved ones who have died from the coronavirus plague, but, Lord, something that I think is equal and maybe even worse is when people have by the thousands family members who are in a hospital where they can't go and touch them and see them and talk with them. That's a living death. I, I believe that is just as painful. And not knowing what is happening, not, not knowing what will happen, uh, being concerned about trust issues and people making sure they do everything they can for that family member when they're still there. No doubt here in a few days, all hospitals will be jammed up and packed. And uh, Lord, we pray uh, that you would comfort those families that have lost loved ones or who are in the process of losing loved ones. Both are bad situations knowing that their family member is suffering and can't catch their breath. And just a few days ago, they were laughing and talking and walking together. And everything and all of the pain that comes with that comes as only you can. Lord Jesus Christ, draw them to yourself and draw them to your holy scriptures for their salvation and for their comfort. For only you can handle this. And Lord God in heaven, you know we can't. We have no words. Uh, not enough tr seminary training and counseling training in the world to help people do something like this. They need you. And uh, they need for us to be quiet and pray. And, and Holy Father God, Help us to do that. And the Lord, I do pray that you will deliver uh, each and every one of us who name the name of Christ. Uh, Lord, from all of our uh, and afflictions, care, worries, we cast on other you care for us. Fill us with your Lift every burden. Lord, we know that you can carry it and you can handle it very easily. And uh, you can get us through it by your might and power. Uh, I think sometimes, Lord, we don't know how powerful, we don't realize how powerful you are and how much you can carry. So help us to lean on your everlasting arms. And, Lord, I do pray that you would deliver our family and all that name the name of Christ from ourselves, from our flesh, and from the devil, and from the demons of hell, and from evil people in the family, evil people in the church, evil people in the world. Lord God in heaven, throughout all of the demonic plots and plans that are going to backfire anyway, one way or another, one day, 
or another. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, rebuke the devil and his demons and his hosts as he is putting things in the minds of certain ones to create plots and plans that are just going to backfire and mess everybody's life up. And Lord, give people salvation. Open their blinded eyes. Unstop their deaf ears. Help them to realize that they cannot have their way in your economy. If they want to be with you, if they want to be your child, be saved, and obey you, uh, and be victorious in life, in their Christian life, they got to submit to your will. They have to yield, as we used to say back in the late 70s and eight, early 80s. They have to yield. They have to surrender all, as we used to sing some years ago, to you, and let it be. And so, Holy Father God, be with us throughout this morning, early afternoon, and throughout the remainder of this day. Let your will be done and not ours. We pray for the salvation of the lost, for the revival of the saved, for the uh, glory, praise, and honor of your name, and for the lifting up of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, who is sitting at your right hand, already ruling and reigning, but also praying for such wretched people, such weak people as we are. Lord, you know, and we know, we cannot make it without you. So help us to be humble like you. Help us to be meek and lowly in mind like you and your God. This is amazing to me, <laughs> Lord, how that you're God and you're so humble and you're so meek and you're so lowly. And yet we're so stupid and so proud and so arrogant and, 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 and don't have anything to be proud of, not one thing. We certainly cannot be proud of our shame, our wickedness, our evil and sin that we've done down through the years. And yet in your humility, your meekness, your lowliness of mind, you have put up with our mess and uh, you have loved us anyhow. And after long suffering and loving kindness shown, now, Lord, you're chastising us who name the name of Christ in your church. And uh, we know that your remnant and your 7,000 are intact and flowing and going on. But thank you, Lord, for your rebuke. Thank you for your chastisement. Thank you, Lord, for this plague. Thank you, Lord, and as I have prayed since the beginning, as you put in my heart, be thorough with us, because we are a proud and arrogant and stubborn and disobedient people, still to this day, with all of this death and all of this sickness, we want to still have our way, and we want to have it like we used to. We hear people talking about how that we want to get back to normal because we want to get back to our normal sins against you and marginal, marginalizing you and pushing you to the periphery and you won't have it. Yeah. You won't have it. And we thank you, Lord, for showing up and dealing with us. And we pray that you'll break us, make us and mold us down to the dust in the ground. Lord, uh, we are not going to like it, but we need it. And some of us, Lord, you can take as your holy word brings out a pestle and grind us into a ceramic bowl and steel. We'll be proud as little grains of dust. We're so foolish, so rebellious, so proud, so disobedient, so hateful, even Sad to say, Lord, of you, and you have never done us any wrong. You have blessed the American church down through the years, the American so-called church, so-called Christians, and you've blessed America more than any other nation in the history of the world 
outside of Israel. And yet here we are, in your face, sinning against you and disobeying your holy word and bringing shame on your name. God, have mercy and grace upon us. And by the power of your grace, save those who are lost in spite of us. Revive those who are saved. Reclaim the backslidden. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray and for sake. On this Thanksgiving morning, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Nehemiah chapter 13. On that day, they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people and therein was found written that the Ammonite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of God forever because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water but hired Balaam against them that he should curse them, howbeit our God turned the curse into a blessing. Now it came to pass, when they had heard the law, that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. And before this, Eliashib the priest having the oversight of the chamber of the house of our God, was allied unto Tobiah. And he had prepared for him a great chamber where aforetime they laid the meat offerings, the frankincense, and the vessels, and the tithes of the corn the new wine and the oil which was commanded to be given to the Levites and the singers and the porters and the offerings of the priests. <clears throat> Pardon me. But in all this time was not I at Jerusalem, for in the two and thirtieth year of Artaxerxes king of Babylon and after certain days pardon me king of Babylon came I unto the king and after certain days obtained I leave of the king and I came to Jerusalem and understood of the evil that Eliashib did for Tobiah in preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God. And it grieved me sore, therefore I cast forth all of the household stuff to Tobiah out of the chamber. Then I commanded, and they cleansed the chambers, and thither brought I again the vessels of the house of God with the meat offering and the frankincense. And I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given them, for the Levites and the singers that did the work were fled every one to his field. Then contended I with the rulers and said, Why is the house of God forsaken? And I gathered them, them in their place. Then brought all Judah the tithe of the corn and the new wine and the oil unto the treasury. 
and I made treasurers over the treasuries. Shelemiah the priest, and Zadok the scribe, and of the Levites, Padeah, and next to them was Hanan, the son of Zakur, the son of Matan, for they were, and their office was to distribute unto their brethren. Remember me, O my God, concerning this, and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the officers thereof. In those days saw I in Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in sheaves and lading asses as also wine, grapes, and figs and all manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. There dwelt men of Tyre also therein, which brought fish and of ware, and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, What evil thing is this that ye do and profane the Sabbath day? Did not your fathers thus and did not our God bring all this evil upon us and upon this city? Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded that the gates should be shut and charged that they should not be open till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants set I at the gates that there should no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. So the merchants and sellers of all kind of ware lodged without Jerusalem once or twice, testified against them and said unto them, Why lodge ye about the wall? If ye do, so will lay hand from that time forth came they no more on the Sabbath. And I commanded the Levites that they should cleanse themselves and that they should come and keep the gates to sanctify the Sabbath day. Remember me, O oh my God, concerning this also and spare me according to the greatness of thy mercy. In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab, and their children.